Hello, this DCS tutorial will be a follow-up to the last P51 tutorial on startup, taxi, and takeoff. In this video we'll go over engine controls, maneuvering the plane, trimming the plane, and a little bit of cockpit familiarization. Hopefully this information will give you what you need to tame the Mustang. Let's get started with some basic engine controls. Now learning to take off or just learning to do some basic flying you should already know that this right here is your throttle and this right here this black lever is your RPM control. Working together these two basically give you your engine control as in how much power you give to the engine. Now what you want to do learning to operate this is learn its limitations where you should keep it running for travel, where you should keep it running for bombing runs, where you should keep it running for dog fighting. Learning this is important because you can overstress your engine and kill it randomly which isn't good at all. So the best way to learn your engine's limitations is to go by this panel right here that says engine limitations. You have your cruise max, max continuous, military for 15 minutes, war emergency for 5 minutes, and takeoff only. Now, these are not the only areas at which the engine can run. These are just the limitations for certain amounts of time. So right now I'm cruising a little bit under the maximum cruise. I can take it to the max continuous at 2700 RPM and 46 manifold pressure. 46 manifold would be right about there. That's at 45 actually. I can turn it up to about 27. That's a little over. Basically, you just need to get used to this because um, running your engine at high RPM for too long can just cause it to die on you. Now, that's not the only thing you need to worry about as far as your engine is concerned because you can be doing everything right as far as running your engine and you're, you could have other problems from damage or just flying up can uh, cause your engine to overheat. So what you need to do is keep an eye on all these different gauges that give you information about your engine, like your engine temperature, oil temperature, your carburetor temperature, coolant temperature. All these are really important, even your suction. All these you need to keep an eye on to be able to determine if your engine is going to die or has some kind of trouble ahead of time so you can correct for it. So running your engine at full speed, say for your war emergency, which is pretty much pushing everything to the maximum, this should only be used for hot pursuits or things like that and not any kind of long-range travel or any, even a long-range pursuit because it can get very um, very unpredictable as to what your engine will do. That's basically it as far as how to learn how to operate your engine. Now let's get into some maneuvering. Now to maneuver your engine, you basically, uh, rather your plane, what you want to do is learn your limits for turning. This only comes with practice. Uh, many people who are beginners to DCS or just to flight simulators in general have a habit of yanking the stick around because they're used to arcade games. This is not how you want to play DCS at all. For any plane, that is. What you want to do is start turning very slowly. As you do this when you're flying, you'll slowly get a feel for where your limits are and where you will stall or lose control because of the violence of the turn turn sharply I'm slowly pulling back on the stick instead of just yanking it back as far as it will go or as far as I think I need it to go. Slowly pulling back on the stick you can start getting a feel for where the aircraft's limit is. In the case of the P-51 
I can start seeing it shake a little bit once I get to a limit of how fast it can turn or I'll start blacking out. Either way you can get a feel for the plane and its limitations. Um, turning is not the only thing you need to learn though. Doing rolls or uh, more advanced maneuvers for dogfighting also requires lots of practice. The best way to learn how to do it is, as you can see with the stick, slowly turning it to its limits, specifically when banking. As you can see, I'm slowly pulling the stick back and not just yanking it back like that, which is, as you can see, throwing me out of control. As far as, ta um, as, far as making sharp turns, the best thing to do is to uh, see the turn coming ahead of time so that you can prepare for it. For instance, flying around buildings very low, I want to get myself into position beforehand so the turn isn't too sharp or has to occur too fast as to throw me out of control. And seeing the buildings coming ahead of time so I don't run into them. That's basically the best tips for learning to maneuver the plane, any plane that is in DCS, is to slowly move the stick around to get a feel for where you can go with it. Yanking the stick at any time will cause you trouble. Even yanking the throttle back or forward can throw you out of control in the wrong situations. Now for learning how to get your plane steady. Whenever it comes to flying long distances, it can get very annoying and tedious to try to keep the plane steady flying in one direction. This is what your trim is for. The trim for your plane is basically changing the center point for your stick so that it will hold the stick in one area to keep your plane stable. In the takeoff tutorial, we already saw how to use the rudder trim for compensating for engine torque or other problems like that. Basically, you just turn it in whichever direction you need rudder. This right here, however, is your aileron, and this is your elevator. This goes up and down. This goes side to side as far as rolling the plane. As you can see right now, my plane is wanting to tip to the left or if I let go of the stick. So I'll just move it to the right a little bit until it stops doing that. That's good. And my plane seems to be going down a little bit, so I'll pull up a tiny bit on the elevator. It's always a good idea to keep your elevator a little bit higher whenever you're flying lower to try to prevent any kind of crashes if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. My plane is a little bit easier to fly now. Now, changing weather conditions, turning different directions so that the wind goes different directions according to your plane, um, different weights of fuel in your wings, lots of different things, including even engine power, can change your trim and cause what you've done with your trim to become irrelevant and you'll have to adjust it again. This is why trim is really best for whenever either you're having trouble with your plane leaning in one direction all the time or if you're traveling in a straight direction. Adjusting the trim all the time during sharp turns and maneuvering is pointless because you'll be having to readjust all the time. It's best just to learn how to use your stick for that. Now for a little bit of cockpit familiarization, just in case there's something you haven't noticed from the handbook or any other DCS tutorial for the P-51. Let me first trim out my aircraft. First let's go with the gauges. You have your compass, you have your clock, you have your or actually your miles per hour, your speed, you have your heading indicator which is very useful during turns as the compass gets all messed up whenever you're in the middle of a bank, you have your altitude indicator, your side slip indicator for showing if your plane is tilting one direction or kind of flying at an angle, this is your horizon indicator, this is your climb indicator which gives you an idea of what kind of degrees upwards you're going or what kind of rate of climb you have rather. Then you have these things like your acceleration, engine temperature, lots of different things for your engine carburetor. All of these are things you want to try to keep in the green. If they drop below or above you just need to keep an eye on it and if it stays there then you need to try to do something about it whether it's cutting down engine power or getting more speed so your carburetor can get more air in it. On the left we have our flaps, carburetor controls including carburetor heat, the trim obviously, a few more engine controls that you don't need to really worry about while flying. You have some lighting controls, you have your mixture control which you use for turning the engine on and off. Underneath here you have some emergency release hatches for bombs and fuel tanks, landing gear handle, your engine control panel, your weapon control panel behind the joystick, 
fuel controls down here. Then you have your oxygen controls right here. You have your electrical control panel including uh, controls for lights and your circuit breaker. Then you have this ANAPS-13 radar for alerting you for enemy planes behind you, which only works at high altitudes, really. And then you have your radio controls that you actually use in-game. Then you have the IFF and homing adapter. These are not implemented in DCS. Maybe they will be in the future, but for now you don't need to worry about them, as well as this radio receiver. You really don't need to learn anything regarding them unless you want to just in case they'll implement them in the future. Or if you know you just want to listen to some surround sound by, you know, turning up the radio. Whoa, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, we don't need to do that. Anyway. That is pretty much the tutorial for operation and maneuvering on the P-51 as far as anything basic goes.